Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about how we can save and export custom swatches that we've created in Adobe InDesign for use in Illustrator and Photoshop, as well as how to import those swatches back into um, InDesign to better maintain branding standards across all of our programs and across all of our documents. So I have a couple folders here on the left. I'll talk about those in a minute, but I'm going to start with this uh, swatch example in design file. And what I've done is I have created a branding standards guide for color for a hypothetical company called Star. I have five different colors here that I've created. The spot color name that the uh, company wants to go with the Pantone color that is closely represented by this color here, the CMYK values if we were going to design this for print, and then the RGB values if we were going to design this for the web. So I've already created swatches, two different versions, one for RGB and one for CMYK. If I double click on that in my swatches palette, you can see this is set as a spot color, this is set as a CMYK color mode, and then the CMYK values match what I have here in my branding standards. Same thing here. This is a spot color as well, but this is a RGB color mode. And these color, the color RGB values are set to the color here in our branding standards guide. So now what we want to do is we want to export those swatches so that we can use them in our other Adobe programs as well as other documents that we have in InDesign. So to do that, we simply just need to select the colors that we want to export. In this case, I want to have all five of them because I want to basically create a new color swatch book for those CMYK swatches. I'm going to select my hamburger menu here and I'm going to go to save swatches and I'm going to save them somewhere on my computer. I've already done this, so I'm just going to override it, but I'm going to, uh, you can see here I have a CMYK and an RGB, so this is my CMYK swatch. I will save and replace that, and then I'm going to do the same thing here for my RGB values. RGB swatches, save and replace. And now if I create a new document, I can go ahead and I can import that. Obviously, when you create a new document, you're going to go back to whatever your default swatches are. So in this case, I'll just click the hamburger menu and click load swatches. And I'll navigate to these two swatch books, one after the other, and I will load those in. So now I have my CMYK and my RGB values back in here so that I can go ahead and I can start designing my next piece of artwork in InDesign. Now, if you want to have these located in a easier uh, folder to remember, I would recommend putting them in your swatch libraries in your applications folder. So here I'm on a Mac, so in my applications folder I have InDesign 2025. Here are my presets and my swatch libraries. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this over and create a copy of it. It'll ask you for your password. And now if I go back to InDesign and let's say I'm going to create a brand new document again, my colors are back to my default. When I go to the hamburger menu, I'm going to click new color swatch. And under the color mode, I'm going to select these two CMYK and RGB swatch books that I just loaded into that folder. That way they're going to be saved in kind of a more central location so that every time you create a new docu uh, document, you don't have to navigate to whatever folder you are currently storing those in. This is basically a default folder that InDesign automatically looks in. From here, I'm just going to select all five colors. I'll click Add, and then I have those available. I can start doing my design work. In Illustrator, I have a folder here called uh, presets en underscore uh, us and then swatches and I'm going to drag these there as well. It'll prompt you for your password. And now if I go to Illustrator 
and I want to let me create a new document here because I already started this earlier so let me go to new file create and let me close this out in my swatches area I just click the hamburger menu I go open swatch library and now those two swatch books are basically available for me to use I'll click on one and if I do the same thing and click on the other one I'll have both of them available that I can start using for my design work in Illustrator. So again, a nice, two nice, you know, centrally located. You don't have to find them on the computer somewhere. Unfortunately, Photoshop doesn't function in the same way. I have a new document here. If I go to my swatches, I click my hamburger menu and I go to import swatches. I cannot have it just set to some centrally located uh, folder. I'm going to have to actually navigate and find these. But when I do, I can go ahead and select them both, hit open, and then I have those swatches available for me. Usually swatches are, um, you're less likely to be using swatches in Photoshop than you would in the other programs, but that's the way that you can import that into Photoshop as well. So the nice thing about that is, like I said, they're centrally located in these swatch library um, uh, folders the problem will be when you go to your next round of updates and let's say you're going to update to illustrator and indesign 2026 those swatch libraries are going to disappear and you're going to have to copy them from the old 2025 uh, folder into the new 2026 folder or 2027 whenever you're watching this video um, so do keep that in mind. You'll have to do that every single time the program updates. So the last um, part of this tutorial is going to be to show you how to merge all of these over to these Pantone colors. Now obviously I can open my uh, a Pantone library in um, InDesign or in Illustrator and I can just copy those over. Or what I can do is I can set up a pre-flight in Illustrator, or excuse me, uh, Acrobat, that will automatically remap uh, any color that I have set in my PDF file to the appropriate Pantone color. So back in my branding standard uh, guide uh, document here, I'm going to go ahead and export this as a PDF. So I'll just hit save real quick. And when I have it here in Acrobat, I'm going to go to my output preview here and you can see here I have my five colors that are uh, mapped with the um, star green RGB, dark green RGB, etc, etc, right? So now the plan is I need to go ahead and set this up as spot colors and we're going to send this to be printed on an offset press. So in my print production area I'm going to go to my pre-flight and I've already created this here. Um, so I'm just going to hit edit. I've shown a similar function to this in uh, another video. Of course, now it's, okay, I was going to say, now it's going to freeze on me. Um, but uh, this, I'll show you a little bit more detail here to map all of these colors. You do have to do a little bit of legwork here at the beginning because you're going to have to set this up for uh, all five of the CMYK and the RGB. However, once you do it once, now you have a pre-flight that you can run for any subsequent file that you have set up in Acrobat and it'll automatically create uh, convert those colors to the specific uh, Pantone colors for you without doing anything except just clicking one time. So this is a uh, let me let me just show you if I'm doing it from scratch. I'm going to go to uh, options here. Once I have my, uh, I'm going to click on the wrench here. I'm sorry, and uh, click on options, and then click create fix up. That's how you start doing a new fix up. Since I already have this one created, I'm just going to cl uh, click on edit. You're looking for the map, spot, and process colors uh, type of fix up. And once it comes up here, what you're going to be doing is, I'm going to switch to the list view so it doesn't take up so much space. You're going to create a new um, option here for all 10 of those colors. So you can see here I have one for, uh, five for RGB, five for CMYK. 
what we're going to be doing is changing it to map or rename. We're going to map it to the destination color name, which is going to be the appropriate Pantone color that we have in our uh, uh, branding guidebook. We're just going to keep the color set to use the source color. We don't necessarily need to um, worry about how it's going to look on the screen per se because again we're going to be taking this and printing it on an offset press so it doesn't really matter too much. We need to do this for all vector and text objects so you need to make sure that that is selected for all of these versions here. Uh, obviously this is not going to work for any images this is just going to be for vectors or text that you have in your um, uh, document. Uh, you can leave this as uh, yes for ignore upper and lower case. We are going to leave this set to no. We need to change this to match with uh, the reg ex. And basically if I go back to my standard view here, that is going to look for a specific color that we type in. So you can see here the first one, I'm going to type in star green RGB and I'm going to change the destination color to that Pantone color here. Uh, all vector and text objects and then I'm going to click the little plus button here and do that for nine additional versions so that I have it for all of the uh, colors in our branding standards guide. So once I've done that I'll click OK and now I have a pre-flight setup and I'm just going to open my output preview so you can see here. All my colors are currently set to this star green or uh, dark green and it's the RGB version. When I click on fix, it's going to prompt me to save. I'll just call this uh, Pantone. I'll hit save. And after it runs the pre-flight, you can see it's converted five colors. And now in my output preview, those have all been converted over to the appropriate Pantone color naming convention. So now I can go ahead and I can send this off to my uh, printer so that they can make plates and be printed on an offset press. The last part of this is not really um, important as much uh, for importing or exporting those Pantone colors, but I figured I'd just share a little extra tidbit there in case anybody needed to um, set it up for a offset press. So anyway, that's, uh, that's how you import and export swatches. You can save your custom libraries uh, or custom books basically so that you can maintain all of your branding standards. Obviously, if you're a uh, designer and you're working for multiple companies, you can do multiple books makes it easy, makes it uh, quick to reference all of those colors. You don't have to constantly import all of the colors, you know, one by one. And that way you have all of your colors set in your documents. You can do this in InDesign, you can do it in Illustrator, and you can do it in Photoshop. So I hope that helps somebody. Please leave uh, any comments down or uh, questions down in the comments section below if uh, you need clarifications on anything. As always, I, I always appreciate the comments because sometimes uh, it sparks ideas for further videos. If you have questions about other things, you know, feel free to uh, ask that down below. I try to um, do videos for suggestions that I receive in comments. Um, as always, I'm going to take these files and uh, actually for this, there's really no reason to um, uh, save these out because your branding standards are going to be different than the fake one that I created. Uh, but if you do want to support the channel a little bit further, always click on that like button, click on the subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and check out the Patreon page. I appreciate the view as always. Have any questions, please leave them down below. And until the next one, take it easy.